I've walked up um, this way since I've been at the marina, heading towards Cockney, bending the river, so it's going to be interesting to find out where it goes. up to here which is uh, evokes great memories for me this is the bottom end of Cookno you see there's a little chalet there back in the 70s my grandparents Norman and Evelyn had a caravan here and we used to come into this field and play by the bridge I don't know if you remember catching frogs in that little part of the river there and we had a, a little punt we used to come cruising down the river on, four of us inside it. And one of the guys whose parents had a chalet just up from us, Roy Crutchley, he was up the marina when I moved there. He's moved off now, but um, yeah, he's, I think it was his punt we used. It's fantastic. Exactly this sort of thing I was just talking about. In fact, there's a green one. I wonder if that's it. It's on the other side though, because the uh, river splits here. Oh, I love this one coming into view as well. That's amazing. And that's going to go up to the um, lock. And this is the back of Cookno Mill. We used to come in there, and the caravan was on this side. Not like these uh, park homes we've got now, they're all like individual caravans or little chalets. Yes, we've got a lot of memories. This would be a really good sweet shop just up that hill as well. Let's go and have a look at the uh, lock. The front of the uh, mill, 1725 on there. There's some moorings up there. If they're private or not, or you can stay there for a few nights. So here we are, cook no lock. That's how you uh, spell it, C-O-G-E-N-H-O-E. -E. It's pronounced Cookno around these parts. I remember playing up here as a kid with my sister and brother. So we used to cross over there and play in these fields. Absolutely amazing. It's looking back down the, the river. This one we saw earlier is coming up. Well, not this one at the close, but the one at the background. It used to flood a lot, I seem to remember as a kid. I remember coming back with a massive bucket of worms that I'd pulled up from uh, the flood ground. You see the most amazing sunsets over there as well. And thunderstorms, gosh, we were in the caravan once and it was thundering. It was only a small caravan as well. Like, sleeps four people and there's about six of us in there with nan grandpa mum three kids awesome yeah, there's a little bit of history about the uh cook no mill and although it doesn't look very steep now as me as a 56 year old when i was a young kid my grandpa had always stop the car at the top here on the road and me and my uh, brother and sister had raced down this hill and it seemed so steep at the time it's been bombing down here and I can fall over and try and race grandpa to the bottom fantastic I keep saying fantastic but it is I've got horses in here now it is a foot party and go up to uh, the village and one day I will do there's a nice pub up there the Royal Oak We'll have a little walk down here one day and uh, grab a drink, maybe a bite to eat. Yeah, it's uh, very fond memories. Well, that was fantastic. You can just see Cook No Meal behind me, albeit a bit blurred. But um, yeah, I wanted to walk up here since I got to the marina. It's such a great place 
and as I've said, it's got huge memories of when I was a kid. Um, my brother and sister in the tiny little caravan that uh, Nan and Grandpa had. And obviously days before smartphones and, well, we didn't really have cameras then. Grandpa used to have a little camera, but um, I was too young to be interested. A bit more interested now. I haven't seen much, got a lovely couple of shots of a heron, which I'll show you. And it was uh, one of those that didn't want to fly away. So that was nice, I managed to get a couple of decent shots, I think. I've heard kingfishers, but I still haven't seen one. I've seen a couple of spots, which uh, likely kingfisher perches for when they're fishing. But um, no, it's been a lovely walk. Just gonna walk back now in the sunshine. Um, what time is two o'clock? A cup of tea when I get back. And um, a little play with Meg. She's found a stick. This is what she does. She'll walk around trying to hide it. <laughs> Where are you going to put that one? No, not there. Too obvious. There is an amount of uh, sand they can dig up to just run and pack it for. Just a couple of tons, I'd imagine, I'm not sure. Good evening. I'm just out um, walking Meg. Sat down there and um, had a look at the date because it's my daughter Amy's birthday tomorrow, 16th of September, which um, rang a bell. So, hang on, 15th today. I've been moved on the boat a month. Can't believe it. So, I'm um, celebrating by having a fire. I thought, why not? It was a bit chilly out there. I was in my shorts and t shirt, but um, but sorry, I'm going to go back and put the fire on. So, here it is. There we go. First fire since I've been moored at the marina. I had one got on the uh, way over. When I was parked up, oh, where was I? Not far outside of Whittlesea. It was the next night out when I was away from Whittlesea, I think it was. But uh, yeah, it's going to look good. Look good. It's going to feel good. Nice and warm. I've been okay in the evenings. Um, but this will be nice just to warm the boat through. But yeah, I've been on a month. I might do a little uh, piece tomorrow about um, what I found out in that month. A, about the boat and B, about myself. There's Badder. Put the uh, new chimney on. Completely forgot last night when I lit the fire. I was really pleased this morning when I woke up, it was probably about half five, um, I walked into the saloon or lounge area or whatever you want to call it and the fire was still going, there was about nice red embers, um, so I gave a little poke around and put some more coal on, um, I did go back to bed for a, a snoozette and then um, I got up again, uh, again more red embers so I put a little bit of the um, kindling little things I've got these you can see them clearly chuck them on and a couple more bits of coal and a log that I've got by the fire don't particularly need it today I just wanted to see whether I could keep it going overnight for um, when it is really cold as uh, some people say their fire never goes out <coughs> excuse me so um, yeah I'm really really happy with that and as you saw in the other little clip I've uh, stuck the new chimney on. I completely forgot yesterday in the uh, rush to get the fire going. Celebrated my one month on the boat. So yeah, lovely. Good morning. 
It's Saturday 17th. Woke it up and there's a real chill in the air today. It's about 6.30. So excuse the bed here. I've just been outside with Meg and she's uh, done her business. So I've just come inside and uh, warming the boat up now. It's, uh, I think it was 10 degrees. Bear with me, the kettle's just boiling. Turn that off. Yeah, it's about 10 degrees on the boat. I left the windows open uh, in the bedroom, so it's uh, a little bit chilly in there. But I've just started this going. You can see in there, I'm trying out the uh, coal cage that was left on the boat. I did buy one because this thing was tucked away right behind the stove. And that's literally taken some uh, little kindling bundle things, um, some pieces of dry kindling branches I've found and there's a few bits of coal on there as well so that's gonna warm through the cabin hopefully I'm just gonna uh, have a cup of tea and uh, I've got some stuff to do so my daughter-in-law and son are expecting another baby in October so I'm gonna go and take some photographs for them a little bump shoot somewhere we haven't decided where we're gonna go yet but uh, I'm looking forward to that got the camera equipment ready and uh, yeah, so I shall see you later. Well, I'm uh, really impressed with this little coal cage. Um, I said I only had a few of these uh, little kindling blocks, fire lighter things. Um, I haven't got many more actually. And a couple of matches, maybe even one match, I can't remember now. And it's lit. And it's giving out some nice heat at the moment. I'm going to chuck another couple of bits of coal on there. And I'm uh, going to try this, keep this going uh, till I go out. And hopefully it'll still be going when I get back. And uh, keep the cabin warm for this evening. Now it was um, 10 degrees when I first got up. And it's already gone up to is that 14. Just over. So it's going to warm up nicely in here. There we go, it's creeping up. Nearly 18 degrees. And then we hit up to uh, 25 degrees. It's about, I don't know, 11 o'clock now. We've even got the, uh, the back door open. I'm going out shortly for a couple of hours, so uh, it will die down and then uh, I'll store it up. <laughs> I've just got back from my son's Mind you, this is in the sun a little bit, and it's uh, 33 degrees in here. Very warm on the fire. I've just chucked uh, some um, couple of tiny bits of coal on just to keep it going. So it was at, at embers point. I'm going to have the uh, side hatches open and uh, keep it going, see whether it drops down tonight. So I'm going to give the uh, air fryer a little bash today. So what I've got in here is some of these... Uh, Baby potatoes, garlic, some of my rosemary from the roof, and some tiny bit of rapeseed oil in there. And uh, I'm going to put them in at 200 degrees for 15 minutes, it says on the uh, instructions or the recipe I've just read. So I'll see how they come out. I'm uh, having it with a nice steak. I've got a uh, nice sirloin steak. With sirloin, always take a little nick out of the back there, which is a piece of membrane that runs along the back and that can uh, toughen the steak up sometimes. So I always nick that, so a lot of people don't, but uh, I think it helps. Okay, so that's been beefing, so you can add food. I'm going to put the... Uh... So that's in there. And uh, rosary in here. I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to uh, put the steak in there and add that to the steak because I always oil the steaks first and not the pan, so that'll be nice. A little bit of extra flavour. I've also got some uh, fresh thyme that I'm going to put in towards the end. Uh, so I get a nice uh, hot pan. Thank 
think I'll put um, salt in the oil that I had earlier, so I don't need to add any more salt on it. Just yet. I just put my steak for a couple of minutes on each side and then the rest is the important thing. That's going to do for me. Turn it off the heat. Fryer's got about three minutes ago, a couple of minutes ago it told me to turn them round, which I've done. Um, they look okay, okay at the moment, they smell amazing. Okay, so they've uh, come to the end. They look very nice. Well, there you go. They're um, looking nice. Just want a bit of salt on them and the salad. Get the steak. And the steak's done. Oh, nice. Slightly more than I usually have it, but uh, still pink in the middle. Mmm. Delicious. Just gonna get some mustard on that. Didn't have any mustard. Whoop. Let's try these. Mmm. Oh my gosh. As my son would say, they are banging. Hmm. I've just been looking for Meg. Had my bow doors open. And she's uh, <laughs> found a little sun trap. Is that nice? Oh, sorry, did I wake you up? Good morning, it's Sunday. Bit of a housework day today. Let's clean that window again. It's amazing the amount of uh, little cobwebs and things you get on there. But um, yeah, I put the uh, video I was going to put out uh, together the other day. So I just wanted to do a little end piece, so to speak. It's been a fairly quiet week again. I still haven't done that um, second coat of painting on the on the uh, paintwork, but I will do that this week. I haven't got an awful lot planned. I've been quite busy. Um, been over to my daughter's helping out with. Uh, the kids and little Louie and I went over there last night with an impromptu um, dinner that I cooked for them. So that was really nice. Um, yeah, I've got quite a chill day today. So I've just done all my housework, which doesn't take long on here, which I love. Um, within, you know, 10, 15 minutes, it's all looking lovely and sparkly again. So yeah, it's good. Um, just seen a big boat trying to get out there. I think it's gone now. Um, it's one of these Dutch barges, looks like they're going out on a bit of a party trip. There's a few, few people on there, one guy dressed as a sailor. So that's uh, that was quite entertaining. But um, yeah, well, thank you for watching these videos. I know uh, it's uh, not always uh, like a lot of the YouTubers I see where they're sort of breaking down exactly how they do things. It's just more of a kind of a diary, I guess, for me, uh, a vlog, sort of a, so I can look back and see what I've done on the boat and. Um, my time here. I, I absolutely love the boat. Um, I've been on it just over a month now and when I got back last night from my daughter's, I, although I had such a lovely time at my daughter's, I got back a little bit chilly so I lit the fire, um, sat there watching something on TV and it was just so nice and waking up this morning the fire was just about going so I managed to get that going again and um, yeah it's lovely but I am going to do a, a vlog um, probably maybe the next one maybe the one after about um, my time on here and what I've, what I've changed and how I've changed I think so uh, yeah again thanks for watching please like and subscribe and share it with your friends if they're into boats and uh, as I say middle-aged men just waffling on
See you soon. Bye.